Hello and welcome. Today uh, I'm going to be showing you guys a little bit about dependency injection with C Sharp and Inject. Um, there's other frameworks to do this, but um, I'm familiar with Ninject. .NET Core actually lets you do this um, natively, so you wouldn't need Ninject for .NET Core, but I'm going to be using an older style framework project. So um, I guess first, what is dependency injection? And that is um, really just a fancy way of saying we're going to let the constructor for an object let us um, set details of how something's going to work. That way we don't need to worry about all the details of those other classes. This lets us decouple our classes from the children's details. We don't need to know how they're constructed. We don't need to know what they need to be passed in. We can just call a new one and it'll dependency injection will create one for us. And then classes will get what they need without knowing too much information about um, the other classes. So like if we had a logger, we don't need to know if it's a file logger or a cloud logger. Um, we don't need to know if it writes to a database or the file system or anything like that. Um, we just call write file or whatever we want to call and um, the dependencies do what they need to do. So it makes it a lot easier to change our code in the future. We can switch out um, all kinds of different things. Um, if we're writing to a file, we can write to a database instead. It doesn't really matter as long as it inherits the interface that we're going to be using. Um, it's going to let us switch out our um, dependencies however we need. And then it allows for easier testing because it's going to allow mocking. Um, that'll be the next video, but for today we're just going to focus on uh, the code to do dependency injection. So uh, I have a project here that has uh, a couple of different classes. We have a message, and then that also has a header and a body that are just getting created kind of on uh, creation. And then it's got, a, it's got a create message that does a set header, set body, and then we have like a convert to soap, soap uh, shell message. In the header, we have um, a header that has a set header that will set this validation material. Um, we have a time, an encryption secret, and a validation material that we want to test. So we have a test over here to prove that this actually works, where we have a header, and it's going to call the set header, and we're going to say the actual thing um, is going to be equal to the validation material. And then we're going to uh, basically recreate that in the test. Now, this isn't, this isn't a good test, and if you guys are familiar with enough unit testing, you'll know why. But um, I'll just run it here to prove it works. Um, there's probably a one in a thousand chance that it's going to fail on us. I'll just run it three or four times here just to prove that it works most of the time. And uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you how it's going to fail. Because um, if we ever stop at a debug point here, um, we're going to run to a race condition where if we don't finish the exact second that we started the thing, um, let me F5 here, uh, it's going to blow up because our expected time doesn't match the seconds of the actual time. And so this is kind of one of those bad tests that's going to cause issues because um, it's going to it's going to break on you like once every 10,000 times. And then um, if you if you write 10,000 of these tests, you're going to have a flaky test run where you're not going to be able to trust that your tests actually work because they're going to blow up sometimes but work, you know, 99 of 100 times. So um, we're going to, uh, in the next in the next video, we're going to um, show how to fix this with uh, using dependency injection and using mocking. But uh, before that, we have to figure out how dependency injection works. So I'm going to leave this test here to make uh, to prove that we can still do tests before dependency injection, but then um, after it's going to make it easier. And uh, so we'll get there. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to look at this header and see that um, we happen to have this encryption secret that knows we have a secret store, which you know could be from a file, it could be from a service. We don't know really where it comes from. We don't really care, but it's getting a secret key. But really what this should be is this should be an interface passed into us so we can switch that out. So whether we read from a file or read from a service, we have plenty of, uh, we don't really care how it does it as long as it matches the interface. So I'm going to show all files here, open up my, um, open up my uh, test and include this um, interface that I created, which basically says, 
the security provider is going to provide us a secret key. So all I have to do here um, to make this work is I have to say that this is going to implement the I security provider. So that works fine. Um, we're not doing dependency injection yet. All we've done is created an interface. So if I come to this header though, I can say you're gonna. I'm gonna provide you with an I security provider, and instead of doing an encryption secret here, um, we are going to remove this. I'll just comment it out so you guys can see where we started. And I'm gonna take a private I security provider. You want to use the interface, not the concrete implementation. Um, and I'm just going to call it underscore security provider. Well, that didn't work so great, but it goes like that. Um, I want to make this capital here. So um, I'm just going to use the convention that if it has an underscore in front of it, it's global. So um, it just makes it easier to find. So then I'm going to use underscore security provider equals the one that we get past. It. So then down here, all I have to do is underscore security provider dot secret key rather than the encryption secret I started with. And so now this code should still work. Um, well, let's see here. Oh yeah, sorry. It's a method, not a property. So so now we have this code. I believe it will build. We'll test it here. Okay. So if we come over here, we, now we've got a header that was getting created. But if we if we put a security provider in here, say the secret store. Uh, so if we we could we could technically make this work by doing new secret store. And that should technically work if I pulled in the namespace. Uh, I'll just do it quick here. So that would work, but now this class needs to know about these dependencies. We don't want to do that. We're not going to do that at all here. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna leave this the way it is. But instead, um, we'll leave this until uh, we add inject in. So if I go to um, NuGet and grab the ninject dependency. And I'm just gonna, uh, oh look, I already, had, I already had it installed, but I'm just gonna install this one uh, dependency injector. injector. Um, so I have that one, and then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna show how we start using this. So the first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need what's called an inject module. And this is, this is gonna tell um, the solution what to do when it sees that there's a security provider in the, the constructor. So it says, um, whenever you see that there's a security provider, I'm gonna just create a secret store. And then you have the option behind that as well to say, uh, I want that in a scope or sing in singleton. A lot of times you'll see in singleton scope behind it, saying that it's as soon as you ever create one of these, that's the only one we're gonna use for the rest of the um, time in the program which is good, but here I'm just gonna say every time create a new one. Um, especially for a secret store, you'd probably wanna do it in singleton scope, but I'm just gonna leave it this way for um, this demo. So we're telling Ninjak here that um, every time this comes in, so if we look at our header again, so every time you want a security provider, I'm gonna provide you that um, secret store. So, um, and you can imagine if we had 60, 70 classes that took in secret providers. Um, if you wanted to switch that out in the future for secret store, you would have to define that in 70, 80 files. Um, and here, the only thing we have to do to switch that out is change it in one place. And here you can even do conditionals as well to tell it to conditionally um, set it depending on other things, but we're not gonna go super far into that. Um, the Ninject documentation does a pretty good job of showing you how to um, condition these. So we have one of the things we need, which is telling dependency injection um, how to fill out that interface. 
The next thing we need um, is, and let me open up the file here first. So Ninjak uses this as a standard kernel. The kernel is the thing that tells Ninjak, like, these are your bindings. Um, and this code here is saying, basically, look through this entire um, project and find anything that's an inject module and load in those settings. So we could split um, these bindings between multiple different files if we wanted to. And it would still, it would find all of those and then any interface it finds, it would know how to do something with it. But then um, I created this generic method here for create to say that um, when anyone calls the static function, um, or if you're in VB, that'd be like a shared, um, if anyone, if anyone wants anything, they can call uh, cr uh, create and pass the type, and then they'll get back from the um, ninja whatever type they want it. So again, if they ask for a iSecurity provider, they're going to get a secret store. So ninja set up now. But if we come back over here to our header, um, still we don't have to change anything here. This is all going to work. But our message needs to um, tell, tell this how it's going to work. So um, let me just double check what this said. Um, so we're going to use our static class di, and we're going to call create. And we're going to do di dot. Uh, sorry, let me let me pull back in this using here. Di dot create, and then we're going to create a header and it's gonna know what to do there. And you can do this on the higher level ones too. So if you did this on message, even though it's not injecting anything on message, if you said DAI create message, um, it's gonna create the message and then see that the header needs something. And then it's gonna um, call that as well. So if you do um, underscore header equals this. So now then this, this created the header and it didn't, it didn't need to actually know what the header is getting passed in. It lets Ninja handle that magic. So imagine we want to add something new here. Um, if we want to add like an iLogger in here, we don't, the only thing we have to do is we have to update our bindings. We don't have to go update every place that the header's called. So it really lets us um, change the way our code uh, works without uh, affecting our code. Um, I'm going to prove that to you in a second, but I'm going to get rid of this compiler error. Um, for our unit test, um, we're going to do the easiest thing here, which is just pass in the secret store. And um, so I'm just going to do var secret. So here, we're just doing this for the example. Um, this will get changed in the next video, like I said. So I'm just trying to prove that this will still work. So if I run this really quick, my test will still pass, which is fine. But I want to prove that this dependency injection stuff still works. I mean, I have compiling code, but that doesn't really mean too much. So to show that this works, I'm going to do um, di initialize here, which will say, uh, one second. So just to remind you, the initialize is going to start up that new core, load all the assemblies. So later, when we come in here and we call this new message, and I'm just calling this, um, this is the namespace, and this is the message. I screwed up and put them as the same name, so it made me do this weird thing. But um, that when I call that new message, it's going to create a header. It's going to inject it with the dependency. So if we just run this right now, you can see it stop right here and I can inspect this message. I can see it has a header and uh, it created that security provider with the secret store for me. So I, didn't, I don't need to do anything else. I decoupled my classes. They don't need to know as many details about each other. And um, that lets me um, change my code easier in the future. And when you start, when you start removing dependencies this way, you're going to get a lot, it's going to make your code a whole lot manageable, more manageable, and it's going to make it a whole lot easier to test. So um, 
I'm going to be doing another uh, class on uh, mocking, and if you don't understand dependency injection, it's going to make mocking much harder, but um, dependency injection really makes your life easier. So thank you for watching, and uh, have a good day.